So let me show where we left the project. And today what I think we're going to do is we're going to start to bring in the we want to bring in the kingdom color game into the bot um, and then also we want to set up a panel to be able to control it and we're going to need to do that using signal r for the data access layer um, so first though i need to show where i'm at with this application so we have a database that we've created um, here we have a authorization server using identity 3 and so this is ready to rock. I just recreated this uh, Pixel Horse Studios database, so this is clear, so we can show how this works. And you can see that Ali.chat is its own application here. I probably want to change the namespace to some of these. No, this is all Ali.chat. And then these uh, are for the Twitch specific chat parts. Um, so if I set this one now here as my default, actually, I want to set this one as the default because the back end should always come up first. So let's go ahead and get our web API up and running. Web API does not have a UI, but we have a swagger on it so that we're able to test it. So this will give me a four bit in here in just another moment. Okay. And here's the swagger. This means that I have a legacy version of this identity server running in the background. So let's clear that. That's good. And now finally, let's run our MVC, which is our web application. It's going to tell me it has a read write problem. It doesn't. We'll just give it a second and let it try again. There we go. I'm confident this is going to work so we can close those. Right now it's connecting on the back end. I'm using the Katana pipeline with it came with Identity Server 3 and we have that up on the on YouTube somewhere. Here we go, we're going to log in. I have a username here. I can do my Twitch account. And now this one's not requesting any, isn't it going to request or is it just going to go ahead and click me through? Because I've already authorized this application before. Went ahead and it authorized and clicked me through. So this one's not requesting any chat scopes or anything. This is just simply an ID. We should probably make it force verify though, every time. <clears throat> with streams, I did a little bit of work off stream with this. So this is a modal form, which means that most of the time you won't see it until you click add stream, and then this will appear. I don't know if you guys have seen modal forms before, but they look something like this. Um, if I came into the MVC and I went to my area and I went to my view and I looked at the index of streams, you can see this is my modal form. And if I uncomment this, it'll actually just work and we can demo it. These here are data tables. So I just applied uh, the JavaScript that came with this template here inside of my, if you look inside of tables here, you can see normal tables. This came with the template, right? So these are nice. This one has hover, I think, unless it's not working, but what the ones that I ultimately chose were these data tables. And then I hijacked the code straight out of this page and then made a few modifications onto the tables so they look like this. When we add this stream, this is what a modal farm looks like and we can say live or dev trying, right? But it's not going to fire my post because I'm having conflicts right now with my um, with jQuery. So uh, the alternative would be that I pass this using Ajax, which works for better design anyways, uh, but I would need to make sure that I have a um, validate anti-forgery token attached to it. So that's something that we can do. Let me add that here. So that was um, 
and <clears throat> Ajax callback with <clears throat> validation token. Okay. So if I comment this back out and then I run it again, now it won't even matter if I click this or not. So I should just be able to do like a live or dev trying, right? Like that. And that just created a stream. So this isn't anything that, and you can see I added a little flare so that I can single select, but I need to make it so that I can, um, but this is only for one stream. So we need to have interactions from here that allows you to add different pieces to this. And we've been working on this for a bit. Um, so the one that I do have completed is the Twitch account. So in a Twitch account, I can associate here, my main guy here, me, okay? And now, what that's done is, this is dumped in my Twitch routed for bot details, is that here in my Twitch account now, I have one for liver dev trying, okay? If I look at details on him, I can add a channel here. This one's just kind of ugly. So this is on which channel do we want liver dev trying to be able to come into? Uh, we're gonna say that he can come into Ali Chat, which is a channel. And that does, it's validating against the Twitch API to verify that this is in fact a real thing. We have one which is uh, liver dev trying. Okay. If we go back now, we could create a new Twitch account here and we could change this one to be uh, Ali Chat. And just a second, please. Okay, I'm back. And then we can authorize this one in. And we can see that now we could add channels for Ali Chat. And so if we wanted to add a channel here, we could do one that is a, we'll just do liver dev trying. And we'll add it. Okay. So what all did that do? If I come over here and I look at my bot that we made and we run it. What this is doing is it's authenticating right now with the identity system. There it is. And now what it shows is that, well, it's not really showing too much detail, but if I was to type in here, hello from the bots. What this is gonna do is this is gonna repeat this in each one of the different channels that these users are in. So you could see that here, Ali Chat is in both Liver Dev Trying and Ali Chat. And if I was to come and look over at my, I gotta go to my Twitch dot TV slash Ali Chat, right? And you can see that liver dev trying is in fact posting here. So everything is working the way that we've designed it. And so now I think we're ready to implement uh, either the game or uh, we could implement um, um, the signal R for the chat. So I think we're gonna do the game first. Let me take a quick peek, let me see. I wanted to look now, since we're not in the MVC, I wanted to look up here at my application under my program and I needed to see explicitly how this polling timer is working. Because, <clears throat> we don't need this connection event here, do we? Oh, that's fine. We want this. I remember I was having some bugs. We want this one. And then on connected, yeah, we want this one. On disconnected, we want this one. Because 
here you have this messages queued on this one BLL, which are per connection. So on your timer tick, this is when you should be sending your message, and you are. Why are you doing locks? So there's something called a concurrent queue. Wow, there is. <coughs> so let's grab this. We're going to swap out this queue here for this concurrent queue. We don't need any of this stuff now. And this was called a concurrent bag. Hey, John. How's it going, man? It's good to see you, buddy. You guys doing okay out there? I'm really glad to hear that it wasn't as bad as we thought. Um, so concurrent queue does not say that it has something called queue, DQ. So let me take a quick peek here at, where is that? NQ, try to remove the beginning. So we could just do something like this, um, var whatever equals, and then it was going to be a um, messages queued dot try dq. Oh, and it's a bool. Wait, wait, wait. This is when you're actually sending the message though, is this on timer tick. This is when the message is actually getting sent. So this is, you're going to do a, so now if this, if you tried to DQ this and it failed, then what you wanna do is, there we go. Now it's making a little bit more sense. Yeah, we're okay. My dad fared okay, I got some good pictures from him from it. This is a Twitch message DQ, so it needs to be a out like that. Okay. So now we're looking and we're saying, okay, if we can DQ it, then we're good. And then we're going to send it. That looks fine. Okay. What? Do we have one too many in here? What's going on? Hmm. Oops. There we go. Okay, check that again. That looks better. Okay, next error. This one is gone, right? This one is gone. This is a... Concurrent bag is what we want this to be. A, like that. which means that this one is also a concurrent bag. Oops. No, it is. Okay. Let's go ahead and build that. There is a connection event now. So this means that for each one of these BLL Alley chats that 
my timer for my outgoing. So this actually, bll.twitch, that's fine. Uh, is going to be ticking once per connection. So we do probably want to change my timer instead of being a uh, regular interval timer to be the filling bucket model. So that way we can make sure that we're never going over anything. And that we still get to hit the same number of channels per month. I got to think about that a little bit. It's actually probably going to be okay because of the nature of being able to register your own accounts. So I'm happy with that. So now what I should be able to do is come and take a look at Kingdom Color. So let's add this in. Just a moment, please. That's under my Visual Studio Projects Kingdom Color, Kingdom Color. Now, I have not seen this in some time. So I think I have something in here called a general manager and a I start, stop, and an update, which is passing in this IRC message, which comes from my own system. So that's probably gone because I don't think I have that library anymore. Just a moment. Well, let's just take a quick peek at what we can do. So let me look at not this one, but this one. When you look here at your library that you've created in your domain, you've already created something in here called a Twitch channel. Phase idle is part of this base phase. This isn't a message here. This will be a, do you have something here called like a Twitch message? What about down here in a view model? Wrong one. So now I want to look real quick back at the bot because if it doesn't have that uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Because when the messages are coming in here on your message event, what is it you're passing? It is a. Where's my application exit? You also make sure that you're on That's fine. Um, on message event, which is passing on this message event args, which has a message to my Twitch message, which is coming from my AliChat BLL. So inside of your AliChat BLL, I think you've defined another Twitch message because this one has more, it's a working data, that's fine. So we're gonna add a folder in here and we're gonna call this models. I'm gonna add Twitch message in here. We'll add models here. So that means that this is a, well, it's not a Twitch message. It would be something like a base message, right? So in here, you'd have to have a class called a base message. 
which is going to be a public abstract. A base message will have a Well, I'm fine with that because this is going to change. I don't need the user on it. And the channel is based on this, right? This contains everything. So this is a base message. This needs to go inside of a folder here called Twitch. This does not need this one or this one. And user, user is defining who sent the message, right? If I look back down at my uh, view models for this one, for Twitch user, if you look at the more generic one here, you should have something called user. Because a Twitch user has an ID in this username, which is pretty particular. Because if you had any something that was just a user, Just another second. Because we know that we want channel here because that's particular, right? We know that user is it particular. Let me just look one more time because I, I have this thing written in such a way where there's a lot of heredity. So if I look at the module domain and I look at my account, I can see that one account has a collection of streams, which has a collection of stream details on them with a module routing and a module routed, which has a provider attached to each one of those. But when I look at user, this doesn't have anything associated to it. But if I looked at Twitch user, this should be inheriting from user. So this is correct. So this should be a user view model. And this is an abstract, right? And this is passing in of a type uh, base view model. And then also you should just add in a user child view model. Like that. Okay. Because now over here, these view models, this Twitch user is a user view model, right? right? And this is a user child view model. And so that means that this message and this base message here, 
This also has a user view model called a user. And then also, didn't you have the same thing for channel? You have channel here, which has a channel ID and a channel name, which is abstract to everybody. Pella asks, if children are models, <laughs> is that child labor? Ah, now I just say child because I use them on uh, view models. And so if I have a view model that then has a collection of other view models, I don't want to use AutoMapper and have that cascade forever. So I call the one that is just self-contained, I call it a child because it's the same thing just without any uh, heredity. So I guess I could say heredity list, but that sounds even, even worse. Okay, so now we also know that we do have this public channel view model, right? If I look back at my view model here for channels, bu -bu 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 -bu. channel there, and then down under the modules, you have a Okay, you don't have one in here for channel either, and you need to do the same thing, right? Channel, view model. Channel routed view model, uh, excuse me, channel child view model. And that's gonna be a public, and it's gonna be of a type of uh, base view model. I know, parent, child, parent. <laughs> We don't have kids yet, not till hopefully next year. But I don't know if she's listening. Okay. And now in this, these are both um, abstracts again, right? Because you can't ever just have this. It has to be um, extended. And we need to look at the channel up here. We have an ID and a name is what we're passing in from the, which is fine. We can do that there and then also there. Which means that now over in the library for Twitch, under view models, when you look at your child view model, this is a uh, channel child view model. And then, um, Just a second. And then this one here is a channel view model which doesn't have these two, like that, okay? Perfect. Okay, then you got that fixed. When you come back and look at this Kingdom Color GM, you were looking at, what am I supposed to put here? It was a base message called message.
There's no message formatted, it's just message. You should just be able to kind of change this into this in this, I don't know what that button does. Uh, current document, what is that? Use regular expressions, we don't want that. up just for the ones that I'd already done, right? Update here wants a IRC message, which should just be a string, right? Action redeem says that this thing should have a, I wonder why I didn't inherit these, a string. Phase idle. Okay, it looks like you have some properties in here you need to include. So this should be a message, right? We'll figure out what to do with this later. Just go one class at a time. And then also phase vote. I think you already have something called a channel, right? Channel base. Base, channel view model, or is it just a channel view model? says this base phase here has this base channel, right? Sorry, it was just called a channel view model. Which we're gonna call channel. That looks pretty good. This one is gonna be called a channel view model. Okay. Don't worry about this. There's nothing special in this, is there? Oh, there is. Don't touch that. You put your enums in here? Dumb. You should make a new folder in this called the nooms. Bring these over so I don't delete these by accident. Okay. You also have this in here, which is a stupid place for these. These needs to come over into a folder called events. This one is called event handlers, but it doesn't even have a class, it's just these. And then also you wanna have one here called args, because I'm sure you have some, oh, I guess you don't have any yet. Not sure where this is coming from, but we'll find that. Okay. Now we should feel pretty okay about deleting that. Good to go. 
game state. Game state is there. This one, phase vote. We want this to be a game change event handler. This looks fine. Channel dot send chat message. But your channel view model doesn't have that. So this needs to have a injected version of the You should be able to do like a protected IBLL. Well, hold on. What are you doing to send messages out at the very top level? When you're creating this, You're not ever passing in anything other than Twitch channel, which isn't a working object. So that means that in Kingdom Color, you need to pass in the BLL copy of one of those bots. There's something wrong with Trello. I can't access the web version. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks fine. So that means when this thing receives this message, okay, it needs to be stateless, right? And right now this is stateful. So it might be easier if we just use this as a base and reconstruct. What do you guys think? Because then what we can do, just so that I don't make a miscalculation here, is that over here, my application can be running, can be parsing the chat and then Alley chat, which will also be attached here, will be firing, will be requesting these BLL OS when created. So these get injected in. But they're by channel, right? So these objects are created by channel. By channel. So let me just verify that. So it's coming in and it's attached to channel because each channel could have this running separately and then needs to have that same BLL auth. So when you're creating this, do you want to have a constructor because you're using, but it's stateless, which means that you should be passing the object that contains all of those. So we should, we should fix this. Okay. So that's a really good place to take just a beat. Uh, I'm going to go use the restroom. I'm going to turn some music on. We'll take 15, 18 minutes. We'll start up again. I'm going to clean and we're going to redo kingdom color. Um, we're going to set it up so that it's stateless and that we're passing objects appropriately and that it's controlled by Ali chat. Um, and I don't think it should take much longer than an hour and should be really fun and enjoyable. So I will see you guys in just a little bit.